Hello, this is Mike Lively from Northern Kentucky University, and this post is on 3D lines in CS4 using draw path. Now, previously I'd posted a pendulum foku demonstration where I actually was subtracting back lines as I added front lines, and I had to do that because there's a limitation in paper vision, and the more I drew, the slower my processor got, so I had to remove them. But with CS4, you shouldn't have that limitation, so it's really important to learn how to draw these lines in CS4, but in addition for data visualization, it's a must. Let me show you the demonstration we have for you today. So let's click on the demo. And we'll appear so we can see it. There we go. And you can see basically we have a bunch of lines and a bunch of spheres or filled circles. And you can spin around that and see definitely that's sorting and that is uh, connecting. So that's exactly what you want and later on we'll have a springed simulation for you. Now I want to mention that Keith Peter has a similar example in his book using CS3 not CS4 and not using draw triangles. But in his book he does it in CS3 and uh, but it doesn't sort the circles and so that's an issue. So his circles are black so if you run the application it looks like it's sorting because they're black and you can't tell. But if you put a line around them and change the color you realize hey that's not sorting so you need to sort. When you apply his sorting algorithm, all the lines just go crazy. And the reason they go crazy is because they can't follow the sorting. So you need to decouple those. And here's the trick. What you need to do, and this typically is done in paper vision and other processes where you have problems like this, you create dummy markers. And so with the dummy markers, I'm able to separate the lines from the spheres. So pretty much I double up the circles and the markers, and I assign the lines to the markers and the spheres to their own sorting level. So I'm able to decouple those. And the code's pretty simple, and it shows right here an example of a ball and a marker. And you just instantiate that, and you pretty much assign the same position as the marker and the ball, X, Y, and Z, and you add the marker and the ball to the stage. Now the marker has a pixel size of zero, so you don't even see it on the screen where the ball has a pixel size, see a radius of 10. Great trick, that's it, and it works. Uh, the way I created the uh, sphere or circle in uh, CS4, you have to remember there's no draw circle method in CS4 using the draw path, so you have to create your own, and pretty much you use the curve to method. Basically just created four arcs and put them together and it created a circle. Now this looks great for small circles, but if you want to make larger circles, you need eight arcs. Okay. A little extra reading here if you want to learn more about draw path. You want to go to Sinocular's blog. He has uh, quite a bit about that. And I actually pulled some information from that. Once you've done all that, you've separated, you've sorted this uh, lines from the spheres, then you can use uh, Keith Peter's uh, sorting method and it all just works fine. Now there's a big limitation. The limitation is there is no Z in the draw path. And since there's no Z, you have to use perspective scaling. And here's the equation for perspective scaling, which I've discussed in detail in this blog in previous uh, post. And pretty much I just uh, do a 1 over Z plus the focal length. And I just basically do a scale on the X and scale on the Y, and it just works perfect. So now we're ready to move on and do some more advanced topics. We'll be putting up some stuff on 3D Springs, uh, on a node garden, and, and my favorite is the 3D Spring Data Visualization Program I've been working on quite a while. I just can't wait to release that, and you'll see that in the upcoming post. Well, to get the source, just download the source file, and uh, or just look at the, the click on the more button, and you can see I've just given you all the code here. And of course, you know I'm an open source fanatic, so you're going to get it all from me for free. So one more time, let's take a look at that example. And there it is. Hey, pretty cool. We're going to do a lot with that. And if you're tuning in on YouTube, you can get all this information from my blog, which is at www.professionalpapervision.wordpress.com. And, of course, as always, all my code can be downloaded from Google Code. And I've actually started a new cookbook. It's Flex Cookbook 3. Let's go there right quick. So click on that, and the download will start. And that's at flex3cookbook3.google.com. So, so thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the post.